Yes, I am. I'll, I think I'll just be sharing the PDF version of my talk uh -huh. instead. I think it will be much faster. So, okay. Um, I hope this works now. No, we are waiting. So, Angela, maybe you switch off your, I don't know, uh -huh, microphone. Great. No, we are not seeing anything. Uh, what what does it say? It says uh, you are presenting. Does it say like that? I just click. I'll just I'll just I just clicked on the present now button. Now I'm waiting for the share button to light up. Oh, it's quite slow actually. Hmm, strange, right? Because, because as soon as uh, because as soon as I pre press present now, I see the options. You know, but you have to wait for that. Yeah, can I try mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uploading, and uh, Neil can? I mm -hmm. have a backup. Maybe sure, 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 sure. Okay, that would help. Thank you. So I'll just. Click on the cancel button instead. Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah. So you get the. Sh mm -hmm. Yeah, let's try this. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, wait. I can present it, Neil. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, will you be using the the PowerPoint version, Angel, or the PDF? Yeah, so the I'm, PowerPoint. I, 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 I think we, I, I, we had success with your case. Maybe Angelo can. Yeah, you can proceed with presenting the slides, and Neil explains. Uh, yeah. Okay, Angelo, PDF version please is do that. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Great. So, uh huh, Neil. So we have to be strict about the time because we are kind of over time. So I'm gonna interrupt right. you at All eight right. minutes and then at ten. Okay, go on, please. Okay, so again, I'm Neil Kaidik from the National Institute of Physics. I work on my thesis under the supervision of Dr. Perius Guerra. Um, I will be presenting tonight some parts of my thesis actually entitled stochastic behavior of two unequally biased Brownian particles with internal resetting. Next slide, please. So um, before we start, maybe I just give you an overview of what to expect from this talk. So basically for this paper, we study two particles diffusing in one dimension with an equal, so take note of the unequal part there and oppositely directed biases that drive them toward each other. So these biases actually would force, would force the particles to eventually collide, but the system does not allow collision. So instead, just before colliding with each other, the particles go back to their initial position. That is where resetting happens. Next, please. Okay, so to study or to, to quantify the behavior of the system. First, we set up continuous master equation for the system um, via random walk formulation, and then ana analytically obtain the time-dependent solution. By the way, this time-dependent solution is also the probability density function of the system. Next, please. And then from the probability density function, or we also call PDF, we determine the resetting rate of the system. And then we also take the steady state probability density function and then analyze it. So basically, we have three quantities to show today, the probability density function at all times, the resetting rate at all times also, and then the steady state behavior of the system by the steady state um, probability density function. OK, so next, please. So. First, why brown motion with resetting? Separately, these two processes, brown motion and resetting, are actually very prevalent in nature. Um, 
In fact, they have proven to be very effective in modeling various kinds of systems. Um, that's why it actually came as a surprise, if I may say, that the seminal paper on Brownian motion with resetting was only published last 2010, I think. Although after that, uh, there were so many papers on Brownian motion with resetting which came pouring in. So what's common among these papers is well, some of the quantities which were um, infinite or which diverge in Brownian systems without resetting, they become finite now because of resetting. So one of the examples there would be the mean first passage time. With resetting, they become finite. Well, of course, for some system, not all though. And then also for the first passage time. And also it has been found that for many systems, the resetting actually would force the system to generate or to reach non-equilibrium steady state. And then what is also common among the system is that the type of resetting are external. So that means an external force decides if the system resets or not. Okay, so what's not so common is the internal resetting, and that is why we are interested in the topic. So it was actually in 2017 when I think one of the few, the second maybe, paper on Brownian motion with internal resetting was published. It was by Evans and Falsao. So as we go along the discussion, I will also be presenting some of the results that they presented in their paper for comparison. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so to be able to get the master equation, I think it's better that we discuss the system first. Next, please. Okay, so our system is actually a system of two particles which are confined to move in one dimension from negative infinity to positive infinity. Next, please. Okay, so these particles um, originally can be found at um, positions negative L and L. Next, please. There, so that's their position. So the, the particle on the left would move to the right at probab a probability of one half plus alpha, and then to, to the left, next, please, at one half minus alpha. And the particle on the right would have one half plus beta to the left and then one half minus beta to the right. Now take note, this is actually where um, the modification of our paper from the paper of Falsau and Evans uh, came into the picture. So in their paper, the alpha and the beta here are equal. But for our paper, we relaxed it a bit and we would allow any value for alpha and beta. Of course, it should range from zero to one half. Next, please. Okay, then to continue with the master equation, it is good to introduce a new set of variables. That is y is equal to xr plus xl over two. So basically you can picture it as the center, the location of the center mass of the system, and then z as one half of the distance between the particles. Next, please. Okay, so just go on. Okay, so just, just keep on clicking, Angel, sorry. Okay, just keep on clicking. So I'll just discuss the whole thing. Okay, so, oh, sorry, there. Um, for the master equation, you would want actually to relate the probability of finding the particles at certain locations at time t, and then we connect it or we relate it to the probability of finding them at certain locations at t minus one or one time step back. So um, one example, for example, the green colored arrows there. So for the particles to be found at the present location now, it could be that t minus one, the yellow dot is from one step to the left, and then the red dot is from one step to the right. And then the probability of these particles uh, going to the location right now, let's just focus on the green arrows first, is actually equal to the probability that they can be found at 
the um, at the at the location of the tail of the green arrow, and then the yellow dot would go to the right. The probability is one half plus alpha, and then the red dot would go to the left. The probability was is one half plus beta, and same thing with the other possible configurations. So all you need to do now is just to add these probabilities. That is actually the probability of finding the particles at recurrent location. Next, please, Angel. Sorry. <laughs> OK, so we just have to be careful, though, uh, with this configuration, wherein we find the particles at xl equal to negative l and then xr at positive l. Because when we find them at, this, at these positions, it could mean that they come from the configurations like we presented, or it could be that they just came from a collision, which is not allowed in the um, system. So. Take note that the collision can happen from negative infinity to positive infinity. That is why our probability for this case, the contribution would be a summation in the form of a summation k from negative infinity to positive infinity. Take note that we need to insert the Kronecker delta there, delta y0, delta zl, so that this um, possible configuration will only have a contribution to the probability if y equals 0 and c equals l, or when the, when the particles are at their resetting position. Otherwise, this whole thing will be 0, and then we'll be, we will go back to the um, four configurations that we just discussed. Next, please. So the master equation is just actually the sum of these probabilities. Okay, To transform this discrete master equation into um, continuous master equation, all we have to do is just to uh, let delta z, delta y, delta t approach 0, and then take the Taylor series. And then eventually we get, next slide, please. OK, this. This is now our master continuous master equation. OK, then the uh, we now have a Kronecker delta y, Kronecker delta x minus l, f of t. f of t there is defined at the bottom most part of the slide. We, call, we also call it the resetting rate. Um, take note that this equation is actually a non-inhomogeneous um, differential equation. But the non-homogeneous part, which is the Kronecker, uh, Kron um, Dirac delta y, Dirac delta x minus l, f of d, that part there is actually 0 if y equal is not, well, if y is not, sim well, not simultaneously y is equal to 0 and x equal to l. OK, so the rest of the values there, if y is not equal to 0 and x equal to l, they just become 0. So they actually correspond to the homogeneous solution to the equation. But so if y equals 0 and Neil, I'm sorry for interrupting. I didn't want to interrupt yes. you earlier, but this is the 10 minute mark. So we have five minutes, but Ooh. let's leave some time for questions. OK, go on. OK, OK. All right. So, but if y equals 0 and x minus l, then the non-homogeneous part will just be f of d. So that we can actually get the complete solution to the master equation given in the next slide. Next slide, please, Angel. Sorry. OK, so that. So again, the first term of the right side of the solution is uh, corresponds to the, the homogeneous equation. And then the uh, next term is the the no, corresponding homogeneous equation, the next term is non-homogeneous equation, which is actually um, solved, well, at least for our case, using the Green's function method. And then um, we also solved for g, y, z of d, and it is given at the bottommost part of the slide there. And then all we have to do is just to insert g, y of z of d to the equation. It's just that we don't know f of d prime yet, and that's what we're going to solve. To solve f f of t, all we have to do is to insert the py of z of t to the equation and then get the equation at the bottom. And then take the Laplace of the Laplace transform of the whole equation. And then we get this. Correct. Yes. And the next. OK. And then finally, we get the resetting rate, which is given at the, most, uh, at the bottom most part of the slide. Um, this resetting rate is actually equal to the resetting rate um, obtained by Falsao and Evans in their paper. 
what's interesting about it here in the context of our paper is that the the press well u which is alpha minus beta the additional part because of the because of the um, non-equal bias the additional parameter resulting from the um what you call this an equal bias is absent in this resetting rate okay so what we have here is just the presence of v which is the drift of the um system which is equal to alpha plus beta times delta x over delta t so what does it mean since v only v is present sorry could you go back to the previous slide first okay since only v is present it means that even if the system have or the particles have an equal biases as long as the sum of their biases are equal then the reset resetting rate is the same so that means for a particle with say alpha equal to one fourth and beta equal to one fourth so alpha plus beta equals one half it will have the same the same the same resetting rate as a system with particle say with alpha equal to one third and then alpha equal to one six because the sum of that would also be one half so there next slide please okay so we tried to plot the resetting rate um these two plots here are actually re uh, recreation of the plot um, obtained by um evans and falsao so what they observed actually was that the resetting rate would eventually approach a certain constant as time with sufficiently long enough time okay then for this case um they they plotted say pev this is actually picket numbers so that is small v big d 0 0.03 and then the other one is high picket number now we added a mid value so pev equal to three and then for the sake of illustration we chose v equal to three and d equal to 1.5 because that would mean that v over l will be one and it's obvious here that in fact, the plot approaches um, one as t approaches infinity. And that is actually the common, the, the constant that the, the resetting rate approaches two. That is V over L as t approaches infinity. So Neil, so let's, that let's is, wrap it up because yes. we have 30 seconds only. All right, okay, so next please. And then we, I, I think we can just show the plots, the probability density, fu density function plots. Okay, so basically we got this. So next slide, please. And the next slide. Next slide, sorry. Okay, here. If you've noticed, um, for the um, third and fourth um, plot, so that is the topmost. Okay, so we can see already because in the original uh, when when u is equal to zero or when alpha and beta are equal so neil we are over this, over time we have to really cut this because uh ah, so okay. maybe maybe 10 seconds can you do that okay so uh, maybe you can just proceed to the conclusion so basically these are just oof. all right so what did we find out? The resetting rate of the system was found to be independent of the parameter u. So we just talked about it a while ago, which is the drift of the position of the center of mass of the system and only depends on v. As time approaches infinity, the resetting rate approaches a constant value, which is equal to v over l. Now, here is where our um, an another result uh, surfaces. So the probability of the system having z less than three so three is the resetting position, goes higher as V increases. Moreover, when U equals zero, the probability density is symmetric with respect to Y equals zero. But when U is not equal to zero, meaning if the biases are not equal, the probability density shifts towards the direction of the particle with lower directional bias. So I think that's well, the most important. Thank you very um, much. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Great, thank you, thank you very much.